up soul warriors welcome to the recovery soul food podcast live tonight with amy guerrero of thrive and recovery with amy we are in episode three of our four-part healthy sober relationship series in tonight's video we are going to talk about the topic of building confidence within learning how to trust your own decisions how all of that affects our relationships and you know that number one relationship is the relationship we have with ourselves. so amy i know you're on live overload amy has been just talking about love and talking about self and just all badassery and recovery already so um welcome tonight amy i'm glad that you're here and have come in with us for this amazing relationship series. I don't know about you, but it's it's been amazing to me. I mean, I I always love spending time with us in, in the recovery community, talking about things we maybe don't always hear. Mm-hmm. And I believe that you've given this audience, this amazing audience, so many takeaways that you can really take from this mm-hmm. and, and go with today and tonight and start changing your life right now. Mm. Um, so I am utterly grateful for you to be here. Um, Hey everybody, if you're just joining us, we'll do like a real short recap of, of the other ones just to get you all caught up. But those episodes are available right now for immediate watch on recovery soul food, YouTube channel. So be sure to go over there and get caught up if you're catching us now, but don't worry everything will still be very relevant if you're just picking us up from here. Also, the Recovery Soul Food Podcast is available now on iHeartRadio. Yay! (laughs) Love it. Great goal for this year that was accomplished just a few days ago. So now we're available on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, Anchor.fm, and all the other amazing podcast platforms. So if you're loving this content, please go over and give us a five-star rating and be sure to leave us a positive review. It really, really, really helps the vision and helps the mission, helps us get recovery, healthy relationships, health and well-being just out further into the world. We're changing the way the world recovers right now by us showing up. So Amy, are you ready for episode three of this four part <laughs> series. <laughs> I am. I can't believe it's already episode three. I feel like we like just made this happen. It was just like, ding, all right, let's do this thing. Just yeah. like that. So good. So if you're ready and the audience is ready, then let's get to it. Episode three, healthy, sober relationships, how to build confidence within and trust your own decisions live with Amy Guerrero. That's us. Here we are, shattering labels and limitations right here. Oh, it's so good to see everybody. Let's see. We've got Joni Faulkner in the house, Lisa King, Susan, Karst. Oh, it's great to see everybody. If you're here and we haven't said hello, I'll say hello right now. StreamYard only shows us so many. You got to give StreamYard your permission to show. So, Amy. 
Yes. How do we begin to build confidence within in recovery? Let's, I mean, let's go. Well, first, I guess we should catch everybody up on what we've been talking about. Last week, we talked about creating healthy boundaries, mm-hmm. how to create and hold them. Um, how really it doesn't have to be like so many times we think of the boundaries as being these mean shields we got to hold up to everybody. And, and you really brought some great insight to that last week. Um, and so how does that help us build confidence? How do we move that in? And then how do we just begin to do that in our lives? Yeah, that's such a, it, it's such a layered question, I think, is what the first thing that comes to me, right? It's um, yes. I, I get these lyrics of a song that come into my mind when I think of confidence that um, sometimes confidence can be this defense mechanism as well. And yeah. sometimes confidence can feel like arrogance. And Mm -hmm. sometimes confidence, because we've been conditioned maybe to think that like by taking up space in a room or feeling good in our bodies that we're wrong or we're bad and that we have to play small or we have to pretend as if we don't understand something. And, you know, like especially, I mean, for everyone, you know, if we've ever been in a family system where, um, you know, they called us a show off once or they, we know more than our parents do. So we try to like, you know, pretend like we don't know things and like get yes. down. And so confidence could feel like a really fucking scary thing if yes. it wasn't welcomed in the family system. And, yes. and if someone ever called you arrogant or if someone ever called you grandiose or like, oh, you're just thinking too big, Elsie. How dare you think that big? Yeah. Or you're not humble. Right. That's not humility. Right. Yeah. Then that can really shatter your confidence. And I was just talking about this on Sober Motivation, where so often these systems have been put in place, right, that are so much bigger than us. And we're like, yeah. how do we build our own personal confidence? And the first invitation to everyone who's out there listening on any of the stations or watching us tonight, now tonight is like, what is confidence to you? Mm, yes. How can you get into the felt sense, an idea, a little sentence, a paragraph? But what does it feel like to you? What does it look like to you? What does it taste like to you? What does it smell like to you? Because confidence for me is going to be very different than confidence is for you, Elsie. Very true. Very true. Right. And so we often have this idea of what confidence should be. Mm -hmm. And you know, the funny thing is we start to like run after that. Right. (laughs) And I've done it like a million times. I'm like, you know, I've been in the hot yoga room since 1999. And I thought that like a yogi looked like a certain way for a while. And so I was constantly trying to like make myself into that. I was like, yes. Yoga is actually all about like me and me on my mat, right? And yes. me, me, and really like being messy and yucky and like I don't know. I don't accept all the parts of me, but I'm still here every day and I'm working on it, or I'm, I'm, I'm willing to accept it, right? So confidence looks different for all of us, but we can sometimes run after something, going, "Oh, that's gonna." That's going to be the thing. I'm going to be confident when I have this or when I can do this. Right. And so we don't have a really good definition of what it is. And in my opinion, just staying consistent, taking the next right aligned action builds your confidence. Yes. But you gotta show why, yeah, where you're going towards. So yeah, tell me what do you what's coming up? I was in the shower right before, you know, before the show, and I was in the shower and I was really trying to get connected to, you know, where when did I start building confidence? You know, because I was never that person. I was very much a chameleon because you know, I was from abuse to to all of my separate issues. I was always just trying to blend in or not be noticed at all. And I started really thinking about this and what you just said was the exact, you know, place that I came to confidence was never one thing. The courage to even be who I am did not come in one thing, one moment. It came by, by doing that next right thing for me over and over and over again. And I'm, 
just, you know, I, I'm never surprised. It's always divine when you, you know, to, to have that, that come up, it comes up with you a lot, but that's exactly where it was is I built confidence by doing, you know, by, by doing that thing or, or whatever it was for me to feel that way. And it was like a post that I put up, I used to cope with the pain of feeling alien within myself, but it took recovery to, to help teach me and, and help me get so in touch with me that I had the courage to be who I was. And so it all mixes together. And so you're, you're so right. What you just said is that doing that next right thing for you. Right. Well, and it's not even necessarily that it's the right thing. And it's just like that commitment to your consistency. Yeah. Yeah. It's consistency builds something. And if it builds something that you don't like, then you're like, oh, this isn't really working for me. And it's it's so cool because when you're consistent, when you take that consistent action every day, and then you're like, mm, this isn't really working for me. I don't really like it. Then you have the confidence. Yeah. To it. Yes. yes. <laughs> you're like, because then you're able to really tune into this doesn't feel good. This There's something in here that doesn't feel aligned. Yes. And I have had in the last two months, I've had so many opportunities. It's bananas to, to like see and feel like I'm, I'm going in a certain direction. I get real consistent with it. And I'm like, oh, you know what? This doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm confident enough to know myself and trust myself. And it's still hard mm -hmm. <laughs> to be like, you know what? This isn't the right thing. Then I got to go try something else, get consistent with that, and then have the confidence to continue doing it or to be like, this doesn't work. And I think something that happens so often in any type of recovery, whether you're recovering from a broken heart, from, you know, just abandoning yourself over and over again, from overworking, from over doing something, any behavior, it's that we think that there's a certain way to recover. Yes. And so we push ourselves into something and we force it. Mm, mm -hmm. And then trust. it doesn't feel good. Yeah. yeah. And then we lose our confidence in ourselves. Mm, mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, yes. when I say we, I mean, like I've done that. I yeah. watch my, I watch my clients do that. Um, I don't know if you do that or not out there. Oh, yeah. but like Elsie says that. He does <laughs> it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it can, it can be so subtle, but what we're talking about today is like, are you willing to be accepting and stay consistent? Because how does a relationship thrive y'all? Mm. Consistency. Yeah. Cho choosing, right? Shit's going to get hard. Right, <laughs> You better <laughs> believe it. <laughs> Shit is going to get hard, whether it's your relationship with money, food, you know, um, your family your partner, the, the relationship is going to get tough at some point. Are you willing to stay consistent? Yeah. Are you willing to stay in the, like what we refer to as growth promoting tension mm. Are you willing to hang in that tension? Because when you are, when it doesn't work, it's easier to part ways. Yes. And it's easier to stay in the integrity of your, whatever confidence feels like to you. I think, um, do you know what confidence feels like to you? For me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, I really, really do. The confidence really feels like consistency. Confidence feels like it's okay for me to take up this space in this room. You know, I, I like my ideas and I think that I have something to say and, and I, and it's that, like you said, the consistency where it started with just little things like making my bed. And it also ended up with those things like you were just talking about where I started moving at that thing I thought I should do for my confidence, for my recovery and took the consistency to it because I didn't trust myself enough to feel in my body and say, this doesn't feel right. I would say, oh, I'm just doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. So I must oh. be doing something wrong. Uh, and, and what did that do for that feeling when you thought you were doing it wrong? It, it, I mean, it just intensified when I thought I was doing something wrong and I think I'm never doing enough. And like you said, the confidence goes backwards because 
no matter how many times I kept trying to beat at it and beat at it and do more, do more, do more. It never, it, it just never felt good. And I wasn't achieving that in which I thought, and therefore it went backwards. And, you know, you and I did work on that. Even if we didn't focus in on that very subject, we focused a lot around it and it all came into it because oh, on purpose. Cause if I would have gone right towards that, you would have ran away. You better believe it. I would have, <laughs> I would have. And, and, and it's, it's come in us know. doing that work. Yeah. It really has come and doing that work. And you know what this other thing is, oh, Amy Tell is me. so many times when I was going at things, I would have a fear that I had to choose and keep going there because I was running out of time. Somehow I felt like I was running out of time and I didn't have the time to stop myself back up and say, wait, that's not working. Let's try something else. And, and that was a big hurdle to overcome. And I still have to do that on a daily basis. Remind myself that you don't have time not to keep going for this crap. You don't have that time, man. So, you know, back up. <laughs> oh, and time is such an illusion. It is. Know? However, what's really common is for the human experience is that we either we're worried about the time we wasted. Yes. Right. We're worried about the time where we were basically in our unhealed emotional trauma and our patterns. Mm -hmm. And then we're in the present moment and we're worried about the future. And I'm like, ah, just like, <laughs> how can we just freaking be here now? Yes. Yeah. And I love what you presenced in there too, of just like when we're thinking that it's not enough because time is about to disappear. The most important healing thing that I can tell everyone for your relationships <laughs> is that the, the, we've talked about this on episode one and episode two, but that divine masculine energy just knows that there's just enough time. And how can mm -hmm. we tap into that part of ourselves, that, that, that strength in ourselves that we all have with support to just trust that like now I do this funny thing yeah. where I'm just like, whoosh, come back, whoosh, come back. <laughs> <laughs> right because then and this is something that's so important how do we enjoy the time because mm. if you're like halfway doing something a relationship which so many people halfway do their relationships yep. yeah and then you're halfway doing all these other things in your life how you relate to one thing is how you relate to everything oh that's the truth there's no consistency so you're worried about time because everything's disorganized and nothing's actually happening. Yeah. It's all just dis disorganized. You're not creating that consistency. So the feeling of integration or confidence or confidence to me feels like um, flow. Like I, I don't, I'm not thinking about what I'm saying. I'm just doing it. Yes. Um, and then after I'm done with it, I just go on to the next thing. Cause I'm not like second guessing what I already right. did. It feels very um, at ease in my body. Nothing's holding on too tight. It's just like, mm -hmm. oh, yes, okay, I'm just doing that. Yes. I'm just doing what I'm doing. Yes, right? and then I'm able. <laughs> I move around a lot because <laughs> that helps me, right? I'm just like, yeah. oh, this feels so good, right? And then I'm able to flow with it, and that's what we want relationships to do. We want relationships to flow. Yes, and if one of us or all of us in a relationship are feeling stuck and kind of constipated and like, I can't really say that and I can't really do that. And I want to say this, but I'm saying that instead and da, 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 then it really causes all this friction. Yep. And then, and then guess what? Both parties start getting inconsistent. Yep. And then the relationship is like doomed for something to happen. Absolutely. It's <laughs> inconsistencies usually lead to someone looking outside of the relationship, whether it be for attention or whether it be for connection to church, to work, to sugar, to alcohol, to drugs, to um, another partner, to cheat. Right. Um, yeah. Like inconsistency will lead to that. And, and it also, I think, ruptures the communication because it doesn't create it. 
I don't like inconsistencies because then I don't feel safe. Yeah. But then I'm going to hold back what I want to say because it doesn't feel like a safe container to dump it in. And one of my yeah. commitments is to like create safe containers so you feel safe to dump everything in and it. And you do. You yeah. create a great <laughs> container. <laughs> you do. Yeah. And what, yeah. what you're and saying what reminds me. do in relationships. Well, yeah. And what you're saying reminds me so much of my wife in, in our relationship past before she before she went to sleep, before she woke up, um, you know, it was hard for her to say things to me because I was very attached to, <clears throat> I guess, insecurity. I don't know necessarily what it was, but if she needed to vent, you know, I was not a safe space. I would tell her I was. And then when she would, would express something that was bothering her or something or nothing she could just vent about something at work i would have emotional reaction to that and it became very scary for her and in the way that we both came from you know abusive childhoods and that was the relationships we had seen so we were mirroring those even though we vowed to never be like that mm. we were mirroring that together and so it very much became a place where she felt alone and it was kind of vice versa too. She was very connected to my pain. So we both were separated. And I think that's probably why she went into such a depression and, and really slipped out on us. We weren't together on anything. We, it was so disconnected, even in our parenting, everything was disconnected, recovery, parenting. And every time you say, the way you relate to one thing is the way you relate to everything. Mm. It just blows up so true in, in everything. I, the same way I related to her in that area, I related to our money. I related to parenting. I related to recovery. It was go, 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 go. Just get over it. Just move through. I was not sensitive to the fact that she wasn't me. Mm. And we weren't recovering in the same manner mm. on the same level, even though I tried, mm. you know, I, I would try, but I didn't have, I didn't know, you know, I was still connected to my pain. One of the other things that came to me in the shower about that building confidence and consistency was releasing my death grip on my pain and taking my power back from abusers. And, you know, versus giving all that power, all that energy to to all that past pain, asking why, being angry, being pissed. Even my wife in our past relationship, I was holding on more to what we had been through, the mistakes that had been made. than I was, how do we move forward? And that was one of the things that helped create confidence within me is taking that power back yeah, man. from there. Oh, you just shared so much good stuff in there. And I really hope the listeners can relate in their relationships to all of that because it's all just so good. And it happens in relationships. It's happening in living rooms all over the world right now. The same dynamic where it creates more separation, more separation, yeah. more separation. And then, you know, because we're all human, energy starts to build up in the body. And then it becomes you're right, I'm wrong, you're right, I'm wrong which creates more disconnection, more disconnection. And trauma is the chronic disruption of connectedness, according to yes. my teacher, Stephen Porges, right? And it's like, then we're, we're disconnecting. We're trying to connect. We're relating, everything's kind of blowing up because I'm we're not relating well to one another. And nothing's consistent because we're, then we're just in a trauma response. And then we're trying Absolutely. to like make it work and Oh, something that you shared is just like so powerful. And uh, this is just so good. Often in relationships, like we forget that the other person has their own unique history, their own unique experiences, their own unique behaviors, their own unique way to relate to the world, their own unique nervous system. Yep. And in a relationship, in order to have a healthy relationship, we have to be willing to be as curious about our own nervous system and our own systems and our own history and past traumas and all that as we are our partners. And to know that like the masculine energy that I'm attracted to is so opposite of me. 
yeah, and yeah. I like it that way. But when I expect them to experience the world the way that I do, which I have in the past, it is absolutely going to be a fight. Yep. But what I love about them is their fucking brute strength force. Like they don't think they don't feel as deep as me. Like I'm not attracted to me. <laughs> like I want my man to be different than me. <laughs> but then when he doesn't feel like me, I'm like, why the fuck did you feel like it? Like, oh, and I'm like, wait a second. Why do I expect you to see the world the way that I do? Like right. why can't I just let you see the world you do and, and, and be willing to meet you there and then just have a ton yeah. of love and respect and be turned on yes. by like that we different. Yes. Instead, like you, I had a lot of masculine energy, so I would just bulldoze over the feelings and just be like, yep. you have to see it my way. And I've got a strong ass <laughs> personality. And so it's like intimidating. And poor, <laughs> the poor men in my life. Oh, sorry. I love you. <laughs> I didn't mean to do it. And I'm very much in my feminine now. So I'd never do that to you again. But fuck. It was just like tough to date me. Tough. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I know. Cause I mean, I think, you know, sometimes I look at my wife and I think you are such a trooper. <laughs> you have been here for almost 16 years. Oh. Way to go, honey, because man, I am a handful. And I, there was a question that came up in that and I hope that I can remember it correctly. And I probably can't, but it'll pop up again. But there was so much that I wanted to ask you in that because I guess, how do we, well, you helped me with this. And so I don't know how to put this into a question, but my wife and I were in a situation in our relationship where the relationship was non-existent. We were just living in the same house together and secretly, not even secretly, we were just angry to the point where we could have almost used words like hate. Um, just, but we were just in this space. We were trying to raise a child. She was, you know, clocked out, you know, and I don't, I, I don't blame her. I did then, but I don't blame her now. I understand so much now. And, you know, how did you help me mm. take the, take the focus off of her because i think so many of us even if whether it's a romantic relationship a friend relationship or somebody in our family that has an addiction problem or issue or whatever we're calling it now i don't know i, I like i got to get this part out is how do we learn how did you help me mm -hmm. take the focus off of trying to get this person to see their greatness their worth how this is affecting them and all of us and bring it back home to me. How did you help me do that? God, that's a good question. So that turned it all around for us. That turned it around. <sighs> we went the really short, I'm like about to cry. Cause um, it's so, it, you, this is a beautiful question. And there's probably so many people out there wondering that I created safety for you to feel safe, to mm. feel, to feel safe in your body, to actually start to pay attention to what you wanted. That's so good. And what you needed. And you didn't feel safe to do that until you did. Yeah. And as soon as I got that opening of safety, I introduced it. And then we started building from there. That's like so our funny. nervous system was so brrrr, and you had all these ideas and you were so disorganized. So I just had to hang in it with you for a while. I chose to hang in it. We chose to hang in it together. I didn't have to do anything. And then there was that moment that I was like, oh, we safe. We safe. Yeah. And you heard it because you were here. You're mm -hmm. in the harder parts of your brain because you felt safe. Yeah. You felt connected. That's so good. And That's then so we started good. to create consistency from there. And suddenly it wasn't 
Jesse that we were yeah. focusing on anymore. We were focusing on Elsie. Yep. And it wasn't your mom. Yep. And it wasn't work. And it yep. wasn't your podcast or anything. Yep. It was like we, 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 you felt safe enough to like go there. Yeah. And my heart is like pounding open right now because that's the thing. And that's so true. That is just so, that is absolutely true because in those times of such great chaos, I, you know, I was the guy holding it all together or so I thought, I mean, it was barely holding together when, trust me when I say, but <clears throat> I didn't have any outlet that I could, you know, really have that space and you're right whenever i was able to take this stuff and put it down for a little while and 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 hear this everyone listening it was the hardest thing i ever had to do in my relationship because somehow i thought if i stayed right there in her face mm. that i would make her see but really what i wanted her to see was how this was affecting me, how this was affecting us, how, and I started to question a lot of the deeper motives. Was the majority of it about her or was the majority of it about me? And I had to realize that the majority of it was about me. Please get better so you can help me. Please get better so I don't have to be alone. Please get better and, and, and I, w the moment I realized that staying in her face, in her reality, was only driving her farther down, and I was able to remember what it was like for my grandparents, the most important people to me in my world, mm -hmm. how they stayed in my reality while I was actively in active coping, um, and they were the same, they were doing, going through the same thing. They were saying, this is affecting us terribly. But the more they stayed in there, reminding me of how shitty it was, reminding me of how I was hurting everybody, reminding me of all those things. The further down I was just going and I was just shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And yet the in, inside of me was screaming, I just want somebody to see me. Mm -hmm just want somebody to see me not as addict Lona, not as, you know, failed at everything they ever wanted Lona, but just somebody to see and ask me, what did I want? And I think you were one of the first people and where you came in in my life was a vital time. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget. It was vital to say, yeah, but I hear all that, but what do you want? And I'd say, well, I want, this and then i'd go back to saying but here's all the reasons i can't have it and here's all the reasons that we can't do this and here's all the reasons why i i, I just can't do what you're saying because i have this 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 and this going on and you're right you stayed right there and you caught all that stuff and then you just come back around and go okay but what do you want to do like how do you feel today what do you, what does this mean to you and it's like so crazy funny. lady i don't know <laughs> I don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> let's go do all the things. Yes, dude, let's do let's the go things, all the things please. that aren't working. Let's exactly. go do all the things that aren't working. Come on. Because <laughs> when I get those, all this, this. Let me show you the list, Amy. Like, look at all the things I did today. And I'm like, yeah, but do you feel better? No. Look what I did. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's just the best. Oh, that's the best. The best. That's a beautiful explanation of um, the attachment system, too. You know, it's like when we're in our avoidance and people come closer and then they're trying, you know, I hear this so often where a, one of the partners is trying, is so attached to the other person understanding them that they're force feeding it to them. Don't you understand? Don't you understand? I would write like the longest, most drawn out like letters about how I felt. Cause I'm like, I need you to understand. 
it was about yeah. me though like that's so that like that's not how i show up anymore because that yeah. was that was my that was my abandonment that was my pain that was my yeah. like if you understand me then i'm gonna feel different yes yes and that's just not true in relationships and it doesn't help build confidence because it's not consistency to to um to your truth to my truth it was like if you say this to me then i'm gonna feel less lonely no fuck yeah. no i'm not like actually when they would tell me what i wanted to hear or what I, I that they understood me and they got me blah 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 then i feel more lonely yeah and i was just continuously trying to like look for this and the closer we go to an avoidant the more avoidant like you said the more pushed down you felt right so when someone's in an avoidant pattern if your partner's in an avoidant pattern or your family member or your best friend or your client or whoever however you're out there in the world like when they're in their avoidance the worst thing we could do i didn't come closer to you i just stayed where i was mm. right mm -hmm. yeah and then you were like oh 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 and then you're like okay and because that created safety for you yeah because what you were doing to jesse hitting in her face did not help her to come closer to you but when you started making it about yourself she came closer yes yes it it, it began to put out evidence and i think that you know this is important i in her world she began to see that i started to actually heal deeply root and it, and it gave her some type of of inner hope within her that if she could watch me heal and i didn't even realize and know that this was how my light was shining mm. i really didn't know this was how my light was shining i was just focused in on doing that work and really trying to take care of myself and my needs and and as she was seeing my light shine differently it gave her this this like hope to think that wow i know you on that level like i know where you come from i know how you know close our backgrounds are and if you can heal this and and move past who how you used to show up in the world then maybe i can too and little by little and again i had to realize that number one i could not create in her reality we cannot create another person's reality but i could hold in my heart and my mind how i really wanted to see her healthy this was another conversation i remember you and i had during that time is you said how do you want how do you want to see jesse like yep. like what do you want for her and and not about you but what do you want for her and i told you i want to see her healthy in her body and i want to see her healthy and loving life in her mind. And that's the vision that I would hold in my mind for her. And every day that I would come downstairs and go over to check to see if she was still alive, that's the vision I would hold over her. And I would just touch her skin and I would just have that quick vision and just connect deeply with gratitude and just know, you know what, you're gonna be okay we're going to be okay because now i feel like i i'm going to be okay too and and that was huge that was big and 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 i didn't i was not scared when her when she had that slight heart attack and began yeah. to have that because i trusted that this was what would well that changed everything and it changed everything i remember i was on my way to the farmer's market when you texted me and i was like okay this is happening and right. i just want to presence two things like your nervous system started to feel safer you started to feel safer you started taking consistent aligned action you started to build more confidence you started to look inward a little bit more and we didn't go deep and have to stay there we were just like oh, okay cool like we understand yeah. the pattern like let's choose differently let's choose differently let's choose differently yes and Y'all, energy is energy is energy. So this is rippling out. It's she's feeling something different. And then the heart attack literally broke her heart wide open. And then bam, like everything you did, you're closer than ever. Yes. 
you than know, ever. If we can't deny all of this stuff. Like, and just to put a little woo in there, like the woo is like energy is energy is energy. And Elsie continuing to take that next step and be uncomfortable and be in the hanging in the tension all the time and being like, this isn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> like all of the things. Changing your mind a million times, like pushing up against me, me staying there, you going, oh, this, I can, this is different. I'm used to somebody leaving me by now. Yep. And it like, that's what we need as humans. Yes. And then that energy is felt so deeply that you truly become the transitional character. And now your whole family system's different. It Absolutely. ain't fucking perfect and it's different. And Absolutely. this is what a healthy relationship is. We have such a uh, misconception that like when it gets hard, it's over yes. or we've got to quit it. Yes. And when we choose to stay, is when we have the deepest, most like loveliest connections. And I think I said this and I want to presence this. If you're ever unsafe, if yes. you're, you know, like we're not condoning to stay then. Absolutely. All right. Like if you're in an unsafe environment, reach out. Like we've got numbers we can call all the things. Like I want to presence that. Yeah. And I'll say something about that too, when you're finished, just to know yeah. the difference so that people know the difference of why. Go ahead right now. Well, the difference was why I, I stayed because there were many times in there that, you know, this was absolutely clearly an unhealthy relationship, but, and, and I thought about leaving and I know she thought about leaving and we had left and come back together many times. It was the epitome of unhealthy relationship, but there was like this, there was like this internal soul knowing that this was my person and it was deep underneath all of the junk and, and the thing and the and and there was a difference in we had been without each other before and there was just a difference in thinking about separating in this time it, and, and it just went it just went deeper than the unhealthy stuff like I, I somehow knew Jesse at her core and somehow she knew me at my core and our cores were connected. And I knew that. I and knew the so unhealthy true. stuff was not real. Like, and you chose to trust that. Yes. Right. Yes. So this is the big thing. Like what is confidence? It's trusting that knowing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Woo. Woo. Drop the mic. We'll see y'all later. <laughs> Seriously, though, it's like, it is. how, how freeing is it to trust that, you know, I'm in a process, yeah. this business, you know, I mean, I, I was, you know, goodness gracious, I was in sober living. And I was like, I'm gonna make this happen. Like, I see it so clearly. I, I took every single cent out of all of my accounts, wow. invested in this business. I was like, at one point, not too long ago, I was over like $200,000 in business debt. Wow. Because I just believed like I believed like I believed that this is the next thing to do. And I trusted what I knew. Yep. Like I trusted that this work was like so worth it, that I was so worth it, the people that I was going to serve were so worth it. I couldn't see how it was going to happen a million times over. But how you mm. relate to one thing is how you relate to everything. And so I could have doubted myself. I could have listened to all the naysayers. I could have listened to all the people that were telling me no. And I kept trusting it. And I just knew like I knew. And I, I feel that way about relationship. You know, like when I know something, I'm like, I'm going to still be here because I feel something that is different than I felt. Yes. So I'm just going to stay right here. I do that for the people I support. And I have to have that fuck yeah when I yeah. say yes to somebody to come in. Like, I don't just say yes to anyone. I'm like, yes, let's do this. I can support you. Right. So You're the only person that does a 90 minute deep dive, a complimentary <laughs> 90 minute deep dive. There's a reason it's not just for the person, but it's got to be for you, too. And I love that. That was yeah. one of the things that I was like, you're going to give me 90 minutes of your time. Like that's you saying. Feeling that thing, like, can I can I really help this person? And I have no doubt that if you if you didn't feel that you could say, I don't know if I'd be the one to help you. I have. I say that often to people. 
Yeah, they're like, I'll pay him full. And I'm like, I don't think we're the right fit. I'll yeah. give you more. I don't think we're the right fit. Because you know why? In our recovery systems, they fuck us over. They take our fucking money. And I'm very passionate about this. Mm -hmm. And they promise you this transformation. And then they don't deliver the trauma-informed care that they say. They don't deliver the you know one-on-one -on -one therapist. They don't deliver the yoga and the breath work and all the things that their fucking beautiful website says. Yep. And then like you fucking liars. And it's seventy to eighty thousand fucking dollars. I'm so passionate about this and this is not what this is about. <laughs> Give it. Why I am so passionate about this work and doing it different and choosing to meet people where they are and learning their nervous systems and understanding is there a connection here? How you mm -hmm. relate to one thing, how you relate to everything. I can see all your patterns. Yes, I can support you. Or no, there's going to be a conflict here and I'm not going to be able to take you. Or maybe you trigger me. And mm. I, as in integrity Beautiful. with myself, if I feel really activated by someone, then it's not an in integrity with me until I heal more to mm. work with them. And so Beautiful. I'm constantly educating myself and constantly, because there have been people where I'm like, oh, our trauma is way too close. And I haven't done enough healing that every mm. time we're on a call, I'm going to get activated and I don't want to see that through my filter. Mm -hmm. I'm just a human being. It doesn't matter how much fucking education I have. Beautiful. But that's why I'm constantly up leveling my education. Beautiful. And then we do this in relationship too. our partners might not be caught up with us in some ways or but are they willing to grow with us? And are we mm. willing to meet them where they are? They're at because we mm. can easily outgrow our partners. Yes. Easily outgrow our partners. Mm -hmm. And when we do, more disconnection. So when I'm, you know, even if I'm taking a course or something, I always presence it to the people around me. Like, oh, I'm taking this course. I'm doing this, you know, I'm going deeper in this. Because then I want the person to know, like, hey, I might start talking a little bit of a different language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <clears throat> Can I, can I talk to you about it? Can I share it with you? Would that be yes. okay? Do you want to learn about it too? And that's even with my friendships. Yes. Because again, you know, if, if we're talking down to somebody or they're talking up to us, then we're not connecting. That's amazing. I, I'm so glad you, that you, that you said all that because I really feel your passion and I always have that, that was the connection. And I felt like there was a connection of there because of the passions that we feel. That's how I feel about the work that I do in this community as well. I'm so passionate about it. And, and I, and I just, I want to see the right people. Um, it's less about the multitudes of people and more about the right people that get a hold of the things that we talk about and, and really try to move them and put them into practice and make them their own in their own lives. And, I'm so grateful to have gotten to work with you and to introduce you as well to, I mean, a lot of people that you already know, but to let people know you even deeper and to know, because I remember signing up for the work and, and really not being used to, I mean, you can buy, I, I had no problem buying myself a pack of cigarettes and no problem buying myself whatever else, but I had no, I had no model of what it meant to invest in my healing and and that was a big thing that i learned through there you know here we are and we've shared so much tonight we're kind of in our last 10 minutes i'd really 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 like for you to if you could kind of bring in what we've talked about today and and, and send the amazing people that are here tonight and those that will watch this in a replay what can they really start to do today? Like I hear your answer in my head, but, but what can they really start to do today to begin to take those small steps towards confidence and build those confidence? And we've said it already, but if you could bring it in and, and give like a checklist uh, or not, you know, however. Yeah, totally. Um, I'm just, I just want to feel into how I'd structure that. So, you know, first of all, it's just like understanding that, I want to feel different. Mm. Mm. Like, I'm not feeling how I want to feel. Mm. Love that. So just presencing, I want to feel different. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I think I say this so often. Secondly, figuring out why do you want to mm -hmm. feel different, right? Because 
if we don't know why, we're not going to stay on That's track. Right. Then when you figure out, oh, I want to feel different. Why do I want to feel different? Oh, okay, got that. Then, you know, what happens so often is we set this big goal. Like, I'm going to be so confident I'm going to look like Superman or Superwoman or Superperson by this day. And it's like, oh, that's probably not going to work. So, yeah. you know, once you know why, then it's like really starting to make a little goal of something that you can stay consistent with. Whether it's like drink water the first thing next to my bed every yep. morning for the next 10 days. Like make little goals. If it's in your relationship. Make my bed. Like, yep. Yeah. Or if it's in a relationship, it's like um, stay open to listening. Mm. All for <laughs> until noon today. <laughs> <laughs> I commit to not interrupting my partner until noon all day today. Oh, that's good. And then just sure, feel good. that. And then the next day, okay, I'm going to go till one. Right. And then you're just creating this consistency. And when you get four or five days under your belt of not interrupting your partner before by four or five days, you're at four o'clock, five o'clock. You're like, oh, I'm a badass. <laughs> yes. This relationship is going to heal. Yes. <laughs> so you have these like little goals that you've made. Yes. Automatically your confidence starts to build. And then you celebrate. It does. You support network. You have someone and you're like, yes, I did the thing. Oh my God, I'm such a badass. <laughs> I know you're going to learn to roll your R's at some point in your life. <laughs> I used to just voxer you to hear that. That was the celebration. That was part. That was. That was party time. I did it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because celebrating is so important. So then yeah. you're celebrating and then you're like, okay, I'm ready to make another goal. I'm going to tell them I love them first thing every morning. Or when they start to yell, the first thing I'm going to say is I love you. And then again, same system. And you create that confidence. And then you're like, hey, can we have talk? Because then you're ready to communicate. Mm you're coming from a different place. You're feeling more confident. So that's how to build confidence. It's like, start small. Yes. Stay consistent. Yes. Keep going. Love it. Find support. Ask for, ask and ask for the kind of support that you want. Mm. You know, like when I want support, I'm like, can you do this for me? This is exactly what I need. And I love that. It's so healthy for everyone. And it's clear. And I think realize that it's not gonna, it's not, nece it's not necessarily going to feel natural or, or maybe normal at first, you know, you got to get past that whole nervous system thing. And I think that, that building that consistency means, you know, going past that and, if you get into that situation where you've done that and it doesn't feel right to you, I like to like learn from, from that. That's what yeah. my main goal is. I like to learn from, from that so that I can then learn deeper trust within trusting my knowing. Yeah. Um, and sometimes that takes feedback in the form of, well, this didn't go the way I thought it would. You know, I'm not a bad person. I'm not bad. Or this conversation with my wife, I, I it didn't go the way I planned. I didn't hang in there the way I should. But you know what? We got a lot accomplished in this amount of time. Here's what I can, you know, here's the ways I can learn from that. And yeah. Yeah. And my takeaway, my biggest like thing about all of what I just shared is do it fucking imperfectly. Yes. <laughs> Yes. You know, like I, I reserve the right to change my mind at any time as long as I, I do that. not pick up something that's going to hurt me. Yes. Right? Yes. Like that, I'm not changing my mind on. But I'll pick up little things that maybe nah, don't feel so good. And I'm like, oh, well, that was not a great decision. But I'm just imperfect. I'm so imperfect. Mm. I'm so imperfect. You know, and my relationships are going to be imperfect. Right? And, but I get, I still stay consistent imperfectly. Mm, I love that. Stay consistent imperfectly. That's the best. That's the best. Amy, where in the world, where are all the places in the world that 
all of these amazing people can find you? Yeah, at Thrive and Recovery with Amy. Website, Instagram, Facebook, all those places. That's where I hang out the most. I'm on LinkedIn and all the other places that come to really engage with me. My website, Facebook, Instagram, you can find me there often. And um, right now I'm enrolling for Sober Relationship School. Yes. Which we start this cohort, this community of people start together on the 21st. So if yeah. you're interested in joining us for school, um, I will include the website with that. I think I gave that to you, Elsie. You did. I put up um, the link for the workshop. How did the workshop go? Did it go well? It went well, yeah. Like I think there was over 70 people that registered. And I think Amazing. at one time there was about 20 people in the room. Beautiful. Yeah. So I know that sometimes people get scared when I start talking about the nervous system and shit. So I'm like, okay, everyone might not stay, but the people that were there, amazing. Beautiful. So thank you. Beautiful. Yes. Yes, absolutely. You send me all that stuff. I always put it in there. Now in the description of this show, you can find Amy's um, Instagram handle. That's where I met Amy was right there on Instagram. Um, and I'm, ever grateful, always grateful that, that I met you and that we stepped into that work and that, and that we continue to have a connection to this day. Um, and, and I can't wait to get my turn in a uh, sober relationship school. I'm going to getting to the place where I, um, am. yeah, we're buying a home this year. So we're getting to that place where, you know, get to build new, stability and consistency. And I can't wait to get my turn in sober relationship school. And I'm going to bring my wife. She's very interested as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm super, super excited. Amy, my gratitude for you will forever just runneth over. I am telling you. And for you doing this with this amazing audience and, and for all those that will watch this later, this is a badass lady right here, and she is so passionate about what she does and about you and about her work and about healing relationships and healing the world. I mean, what every issue we have in the world is from a broken relationship, whether it's war, whether it's prejudice, whether it's racism, whatever it is, it comes from that broke that breakdown of connection with one human to another. Um, and so thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. thank you for what you've done for me and my family. Thank you for what the, all the ways you'll touch everybody else in the world. Oh. It's a ripple. It's a ripple. You touch me. I touch others. They touch others. This is sober relationships will change the world. Right. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So, Everybody, please get hooked up with Amy Guerrero at Thrive and Recovery with Amy on Instagram, Facebook, and her website. It's an absolutely the most amazing thing that you will ever do in your life in this point. Um, don't be afraid to grow and keep moving forward. You are you're more of a badass than you realize. You have so much amazing in you. And you know what? It's time to just start unpacking the suitcase of your soul and, and live that beautiful, amazing life that you've dreamed of that maybe you don't think is possible, but that is absolutely yours for the taking. So do whatever it takes to find your greatness. Amy, we'll see you next week for the fourth and final episode of this series. Next week, for the last 10 minutes, we're going to do a, a Q&A, a question and answer. So you guys... Be getting your questions ready. What what have you what have you gained from from this relationship series so far? If you just joined us tonight, what have you gained from tonight? Leave us comments. Comment, comment, comment. We want to see what's actually resonating with you, what's actually helping you, and most of all, what you need in your relationships when in in your life. So get your questions ready. You're gonna have time to ask those to Amy herself. If you got one for me, I'll answer it, but I'm sure you'll want the expert to answer. So you guys join us back here. Same channel, 8 or 8.45 next week. Do you know yet? We can do earlier next week. Yeah. Okay. We so PM Eastern Standard Time, you guys join us right here. And um, 
we look forward to seeing you then. Amy, as always, thank you so much. This has been another amazing, amazing, amazing episode. And I love you. Thank you. And I, we will all see you next week. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.